Holy Cross won the toss. They deferred, so South Dakota State will have the football first. Not the biggest crowd of the year here at Dykehouse Stadium, but certainly enthusiastic as we're ready to get this quarterfinal underway from Brookings. It's a short kick. And here comes Jaden Yonke. Ball comes out. And the Jacks able to recover at the 16-yard line. Special teams could be a factor here today, Rocky. Let's go down to Taylor. This track through the postseason is particularly special for South Dakota State quarterback Mark Gronowski. A year ago, he was sitting on the sideline recovering from an ACL injury, having to watch his team go through the postseason. But every single game, he would sit on headset with his offensive coordinator, Zach Lujan. The two would dissect opposing defenses and talk about his own offense. And he feels like now he can basically finish the sentences of a, his offensive coordinator and it's what he feels like has allowed him to be ready for this moment right here as South Dakota State tries to win their first ever national championship. Well he's guided him to one national title game before he is complete on his first pass of the day. It's to Jackson Yankee. Devin Haskins will run him out of bounds. Mark Gronowski Injured at left ACL in that title game. You know it's just burning inside for yeah. him to get back to that championship. And, and that's what we've seen. That, that leg has gotten healthier. The fatigue is less of a factor. And as I said in the open here, his legs, his running ability has really become a factor down the stretch. So after the first down completion, Gronowski's going to run it. Trying to cut the corner on the outside and takes a body blow short of the 30-yard line. Dante Bolden who hasn't missed a game in three years at linebacker, throwing his body around early. Yeah, this Holy Cross defense has speed, especially on the back end. You saw it right there. And, and Gronowski, not, not the most fleet of foot guy, but he's big. He's powerful, 6'3", 220. He'll go keep running that football here today. Second down and seven. Jacks don't have a vertical passing game that's really explosive. They commit themselves to the run. But they're going to throw it here on second down. And there's Tucker Kraft getting involved early. The tight end who declared for the draft last month. He had zero catches last week. And Zach Lujan wanted to get him a touch right away. Yeah, it's important to get him started early because he's going to be a top 50 pick in the NFL draft. He is that good. 6'5", 255, super athletic in these tight ends here. Both 87, Zach Hines and Tucker Kraft. That duo really sets the South Dakota State offense apart. Zach Lujan sent him a text after last week's game and said, hey, <laughs> Tucker, I'm sorry, man. That's on me. I'm going to get you some next week. And he said he didn't care just as long as they're winning. Stepping out of a tackle. There's Isaiah Davis. First down and more. How close to midfield. Terrence Spence will chop him down short of the midfield line. It's a 15-yard game. Well, that's how you draw it up right there. If you're South Dakota State, you want your running back one-on-one -on -one in the hole. Here comes a safety come up and just that's what Isaiah Davis does. He makes the first guy miss, switches the ball to his right hand. He, he's just a downhill runner and just really is just powerful run behind these big offensive linemen for South Dakota State. Went over a thousand yards last week. 13 career 100 yard games. Six have come in the playoffs, including 156 against Holy Cross in the spring of 21. He is trying to spin his way out of tackles at the 50-yard line, Dante Bolden again there to make the stop. It's a short game, second down for the Jacks. And Isaiah Davis, you know, he's the Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year. There's a lot of people that think he could be a, a big-time running back in the FBS, but they're sure happy to have him here at South Dakota State. As we mentioned, six times has gone over 100. Really does a nice job. As you can see here early, Rocky, it's a measured pace. They huddle, they take their time. Yes, absolutely. Slow, methodical, just move that ball down the field. Four wide receivers. Davis in the backfield. He'll try to find the A-gap. Bounces out of trouble and then gets ahead. Good patience to find an opening, and it's going to set up third and manageable. It's a great job. We saw the right guard there, Evan Bernston, pull around and... Lead Isaiah Davis through the hole, and you can see he's patient. Got good vision, and he didn't just ram that thing up in there. He kind of gets patient, finds the opening, and then hits it. The Holy Cross defense under coordinator Scott James trying to make an early stop. Had the number one defense in the FCS last year. They battled through some injuries this year. Third down. 
Davis plowing ahead. He's not going to get it. About a yard short. So now a fourth down decision here early for John Stiglmeyer and his staff. Good job by the safety. Walter Reynolds coming out of that high middle of the field there and being a force in the run. I don't think there's any question in Stiglmeyer's mind here. They're going to go for this thing behind this home crowd. The Jackrabbits five for nine on fourth down attempts this year. We're going to send the Yankee brothers out wide to either side. Under center, Gronowski trying to get it himself. Mark Gronowski, did he get it? Holy Cross says no. This will all depend on the spot. It's going to be real close. His forward progress may have, may have gotten for him, but that's real close. We may need a measurement here. They got it. First down, South Dakota State. You know, it's always a good idea. The quarterback sneaks short yarders behind this offensive line. They go 300 pounds across the board. And this is the single best play. Ask any defensive player. Single best play in short yarder situations is that quarterback sneak. is so hard to stop when you just need half a yard. What do they call that offensive line? The 605 Hogs. 605 Hogs. <laughs> Love it. The big boys. Little reverse between the brothers. Back to the quarterback, Gronowski. Now he finds Jackson Yonke. How about that play call from Zach Lujan, the offensive coordinator, the 27-year-old wonderkind. And that's a first down. Yeah, right on cue as we talk about their methodical kind of plotting approach. They get a double reverse pass. And look at the offensive linemen get out and lead the way. Three offensive linemen, three of those 605 hogs blocking downfield. And look at Yonke there. Great job here, as we said, the two twin brothers getting it done for the Jackrabbits. They're the pride of Madison, South Dakota. About a half-hour car ride here from the campus in Brookings. Lamar Johnson in the backfield. On the play fake, Gronowski going deep. Has a receiver, and it's knocked away. Beautiful defense by Walter Reynolds, the free safety. That was intended for Landon Wolf. And, and when you run the ball the way South Dakota State does, the play-action pass, of course, is a huge factor. And they try to sneak Landon Wolf across the field and look at the nice job Walter Reynolds did, showing the speed, making up a lot of ground because Landon Wolf looked wide open for a minute there. Reynolds, their number two tackler, leads the team with five INTs, had two last week. Yeah, that one he had early was big for him, too. Opening drive of the game for South Dakota State. So many formations. South Dakota State, look at this, motion, switches, trades. Power to the left side, and they run it with Johnson. Amar Johnson, the primary backup to Davis. And he's going to be knocked down at the 25-yard line. And that's why offenses do all that motion and trade and shift. And what they're doing is they're trying to confuse the defense on their gaps. They're eliminating a gap on the right side, then they move a couple guys. Now there's two new gaps on the left side, and they're trying to see, as a defensive player, are you gap sound? Do you know the ins and outs of this defense? And if not, they're going to take advantage. South Dakota State 11 and 1. They've won a program record 11 straight since losing to Iowa in the season opener. Third down and five. Mark Gronowski, the sophomore, in and out of the hands of Tucker Kraft. The future NFL tight end, a ball he should normally catch, lands on the turf and it's fourth down. Yeah, that's a major miss right there by Kraft, because he catches that underneath route. He scoots forward with his size, breaks a tackle or two, and that's a first down. Instead, they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Hunter Dustman, who's been really good lately, had a choppy start to the year, but now hasn't missed a field goal in over two months. Try to get the first points of the game. He sets up from 42 yards up out of the hold of Heidi. And it's no good. Wide to the left, and South Dakota State comes up empty on the opening series. If you're South Dakota State right now, a missed opportunity. They march the ball down the field, the Holy Cross builds the wall, and Bob Chesney says, hey, we got some momentum, we're back in this football game here. Well, Holy Cross, Cross takes over at the 25 after that missed field goal from South Dakota State. Program sixth playoff appearance, first FCS quarterfinal since 1983, and Matthew Sluka having a great year at the controls. Yeah, his develop is the sing development is the single biggest reason they've exploded this year. Really good player. 
Leading rusher. Number one rushing quarterback in the FCS with over 1,000 yards on the ground. Like you said, Rocky, he has to play well today. But he fumbles the opening snap. Flea flicker. Running for his life, Sluka gets it away, but it's incomplete. Well, that was a near disaster for the Crusaders on the opening play from And, and you can scrimmage. tell they were excited about that play. Going to open the game with a flea flicker, but it just was bad from the jump. You know, he kind of took his eyes off the ball before he could hand it to his running back. And you can see what the South Dakota State defense does. They swarm the football. Peter Oliver, who has been carrying this offense, Last few weeks lines up in the backfield to the left of Sluka as they check the play here on second down and ten. And it'll be Sluka with the carry. And South Dakota State was ready for him. That's where this game might be won in the trenches when Holy Cross has the football. 100%. And I think it's going to be Sluka. I mean, he, there was a rush attempt there. He had 12 last week. He may need 15 to 20. I mean, you want that ball in his hands because he's maybe the best running back on this team. And the number one rush defense in the FCS on the other side with only giving up 100 yards rushing twice this year. Third down and six. Jack's trying to get off the field. Pressure coming. Pass is complete to Coker out across the 40. A first down for Jalen Coker. Their best playmaker. Wow, that was a confidence builder right there for, Sal for Sluka. Stays tough in the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield, and finds his best wide receiver, Jalen Coker. You know, th th these two have a real connection on and off the field. They're always hanging out together, practicing, eating together, the whole deal. And Coker's a future NFL guy himself. 15-yard pickup for Coker, the two-time All-Patriot League selection. Out of the gun, design quarterback run, look out, Sluka. In free flight inside the 20, goodbye. Touchdown, Matthew Sluka. What a statement here on the opening series for Holy Cross. In the quarterback run, is always such a factor because you got to have that extra hat in the box. They don't have that safety. He's out there out wide covering down on wide receivers. And Sluka just takes advantage, runs it right up the gut. And you can see how dynamic of a player, how much of a force he is out on that field. 56-yard touchdown run for Sluka as Derek Ng tacks on the extra point. Matthew Sluka ran for over 100 and a couple of touchdowns last week out to a great start today. Well, we said in the game's biggest moments, he wants the ball in his hands, and he does just that running right at your camera for the touchdown, 7-0 Holy Cross. Matthew Sluka and Holy Cross trying to pull off the biggest upset in program history today. So far, so good. Sluka, a 56-yard touchdown run, the longest allowed by South Dakota State this year, Rob. And they get the benefit. They're going to put Peter Oliver in motion. Once they do, it, it influences the linebacker, Savian Williamson, just enough just to scoot him over a couple feet. And that's all that Matthew Sluka needs. Look, he should have been right there. And instead, he's not, has to get not even an arm tackle, and then there is nothing but space and opportunity for Sluka down the middle of the field. So it's little things in football just influencing, right? They say football is a game of inches, and you saw it right there. Sluka 23 and 4 all time as the Holy Cross starter. One of those losses coming here. That's going to be a penalty flag. Kicked out of bounds as Holy Cross tries to get tricky. And it backfires. Yeah, and it goes out of bounds on a fly. And that's going to give them ball at the 40-yard line. they got to give credit to Bob Chesney and his staff here. Some wrinkles early. You know, hey, they're saying, what do we got to lose? Right. And look, you got the number one team in the country at their place. It's cold. Hey, let's go in here and try to shake things up, keep them off balance. He's done just that. That one didn't work out, though, however. I had to argue that there's no coach in the country that's Got more positivity, has more yeah. energy than Bob Chesney. And he's turned programs around every place he's been. Really enjoyed talking with him this week. So great field position here for the Jacks on their second possession. Isaiah Davis starts in the backfield. He'll get the toe to it. 
The big running back from Joplin, Missouri, lowering his shoulder, gets close to the 30-yard line. Reynolds steps up to bring him down, but a first down carry for Davis, 13 yards. And watch, the linebackers are taught to read the offensive linemen. South Dakota State pulls two offensive linemen to their left. Watch the linebackers, they get influence again just enough and they sneak the running back out to the outside here. That's just a great job. You got to play with those linebackers' eyes and make them hesitant out there. Two great running backs yeah. to watch today, Isaiah Davis and Peter Oliver. Kind of similar builds, similar running styles. Tough, run hard up the middle. Absolutely. Out of the pistol this time, Davis picking his way on the right side of the formation. Back in his way, an eight-yard pickup as John Smith brings him down to the turf. Let's go down to Taylor. And with Isaiah Davis, he told me the biggest thing for him this week is he finally feels healthy. He missed eight games last year with a broken collarbone, sat out a game this year with a shoulder injury, and he said at times he would be tentative because he was always thinking about those injuries, but he feels like right now he's ready for the postseason because all those injuries are in the back of his mind no more. Yeah, that, that's a dangerous uh, thing if you're Holy Cross. you got one of the best running backs in the FCS, and he's finally feeling healthy. It's not good. Second down and short. Mark Grunowski from Naperville, Illinois, in trouble, and he's going to be twisted down at the 30-yard line. Jake Reichwein, who leads the team in sacks, brings Grunowski down for a loss on the play. Great blitz design. They bring Dante Bolden, the linebacker, right up the middle, right into the lap of Gronowski and forces him to the outside. And then I talked about it earlier, the speed of this defense, right? Get right one, one of their best defensive linemen. You're not going to outrun him. It's a nice play. Seven and a half sacks now for right one on the year. That's a loss of six. Third down and eight for South Dakota State. Conservative play here. Gronowski finding room on the outside, and the quarterback is going to pick up the first down and angles out at the 14-yard line. Didn't expect that. It works well for the Jazz. Yeah, if you're Holy Cross, you got to have an edge to your defense. Watch Dan Kuznetsov on the outside. It's a little bit nosy, and that's just enough for Gronowski. And we talked about his legs being a factor here down the stretch where they weren't not even a month ago. Picks up the first down. Coming off his best rushing game of the year. Eight carries, 73 yards, and a touchdown last week. Picks up the first down there. First and 10 as South Dakota State's in the red zone. Davis looking for some room on the left side of the big <laughs> offensive line. In the red zone this year, Rocky, South Dakota State ranks third in the FCS. Usually when they get in here, they pay it off and, and that's the difference right that's the difference between the teams that you know have a 500 record and teams that are in the top in this whole league like South Dakota State is getting these red zone opportunities and the biggest reason they're so good in the red zone is because they can run the ball so effectively behind that offensive line this is the area of the field when it starts to shrink where you've got to be able to run the ball and they can do just that keep an eye on Tucker Kraft he's in the slot now going in motion number 85 It'll be Gronowski sprinting out to the right, and nothing doing this time. He is cut off by Christos Argus, the senior safety out of Rhode Island. And so it'll be third down. And this is where Gronowski really likes to run the ball, is down inside that 15-yard line, 10-yard line, likes to keep it himself. Only twice all year as South Dakota State failed to score in the red zone, either a touchdown or a field goal. They are 48 for 50. Got Tucker Kraft, the tight end, down in the bottom of the screen. See if they get him involved here. Get his height involved. Gronowski looking his way, going for Kraft. Contact. Fans want a penalty flag. John Smith in coverage. No flag thrown. It's incomplete and fourth down. Yeah, you can see that's a matchup they wanted. Your 6'5 tight end on the six foot John Smith, but did a nice job here. He tried to go with the back shoulder, maybe a little bit of contact. Hey, I, I like letting him play right there. That's fine with me. Good, good play. Well, Hunter Dustman is going to come on for another attempt. He missed his first try from 42 yards out. This is a little easier from 29. He's had some big kicks this year. And that one is true. 
Hunter Dustman. Good South Dakota State on the board, but kind of a choppy start here for the number one seed in the country. This quarterfinal game nearing the late stages of the first quarter, 7-3 Holy Cross. V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, game-changing research. We want you to join the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. Clay Manfick alongside Rocky Boyman, former star linebacker at Notre Dame. Taylor McGregor down on the sideline. We're here in a foggy Brookings. Where it's now 7-3. Eight plays, 31 yards, just over four minutes for the Jacks. It results in a 29-yard field goal for Dustman, as South Dakota State is on the board for the first time. And Matthew Sluka and that Holy Cross offense... She's had a good start here today, ready to get it back. This is Justin Shorter. And he's going to be hammered down as he crosses the 20-yard line. Good coverage there by the Jacks on that 16-yard return. Well, tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, we're going to have the 88th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony presented by Nissan. Four finalists, all quarterbacks. Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, C.J. Stroud, and Caleb Williams from USC. We hope you can tune in. Who do you like? I, I like Caleb Williams. I, and even in the, the uh, defeat last week, him running around, playing on one leg the way he did and putting up those kind of numbers, and I, I think he's the guy that's going to get it. Uh, lost to Utah, but one that kind of thinks that Williams is going to walk away with that award tonight. Here's Peter Oliver on first down for Holy Cross. Not much as they run into the teeth of the number one rushing defense in the FCS. But this is the best rushing offense in Holy Cross history. Over 2,900 yards. Like South Dakota State likes to stay committed to the run, Rocky. So does Holy Cross. Absolutely. Holy Cross runs the ball 65% of the time. And I think it's important to get number 24, Oliver, going. Over 2,000 career rush yards. He really sets the tone for this offense. Program record 12-0, the Crusaders trying to pull an upset today. Down the middle of the field, Sluka incomplete, well behind Shorter, the intended man. And I'm not sure what happened there because he had Shorter wide open. I don't know if that ball slipped out of his hand. You know, the cold weather, sometimes that ball can get like a film on it. It's harder to grip. That moisture of your hand can't really connect with that ball. You can see him shaking that hand off. He knows he missed that one. Holy Cross had a slow start last week. Pulled away in the second half to beat New Hampshire 35-19 in the rain in Worcester. These conditions, I think, are more favorable for what Holy Cross likes to do here today in Brookings. Third down and nine. Some pressure. Sluka dancing around. Ball comes out. Offensive lineman recovers, though, for the Crusaders. Somehow Cam McNair came up with it. And that is the second time that Holy Cross has lost the football but recovered it. And the defensive line leads the way for this South Dakota de State defense. That just punishes you. This is Reese Winkleman, 97, coming just jetting right inside, not giving up on the play, stripping it. I mean, th th this defensive line, Clay, they're going to rotate 10 different guys on that D line, and every single one of them can play. That's Reese Winkleman's 22nd and a half sack this year. Rare carelessness by Holy Cross. They usually protect the football exceptionally well. Only five turnovers all season and just one fumble lost, and that was last week. And now for the second straight time, South Dakota State's going to start with great field position. Yeah, and that's the one thing they really do well. That's what every football team and football coach talks about and preaches. Got to take care of the football. Got to take the football away. Something they haven't done. Look at that, plus 18 turnover margin. Uh, that's phenomenal. But as you, as you mentioned, Clay, a couple times a day already, a little sloppy with the ball. Well, South Dakota State turned the short field on their last drive into three points. Lamar Johnson starts in the backfield next to Gronowski. As Hines goes in motion, play action pass. Here's Gronowski. He's going to take a shot deep. Looking for Yonke. He's got it. Jackson Yonke. All the way down inside the 10. Their top pass catcher with a big play. And, and this is just a great job of reading by Gronowski. He's going to see Walter Reynolds a safety in the middle of the field. Okay, but then Reynolds will flip and go to the outside and then just 
Yonke runs right by him. That's just a great read by Gronowski. Reading that safety, manipulating him with his eyes, and then hitting your target. 44-yard reception for one of the Yonke twins there. Jackson Yonke this time. He had a beautiful touchdown grab back at the end zone last week. First down and goal to go for the Jacks. Amar Johnson trying to bounce to the outside. Good pursuit there, and he's wrestled down for a short game. John Smith with the stop. Yeah, Mar Johnson, another productive running back. Maybe a little bit more speed and quickness to the outside versus Isaiah Davis, who's just powerful. They like to rotate both those guys in. And again, if you're Holy Cross right here, you really got to watch the quarterback run down here. Winner of this game gets Montana State. The Bobcats just dominant last night. Red zone again, late stages of the first quarter for South Dakota State. Gronowski to the end zone, looking for Yonke, and that's knocked away. Good coverage again by Terrence Spence, the junior cornerback out of New Jersey. See all these Holy Cross cornerbacks are playing well. They tried John Smith last time down this area of the field with Tucker Kraft. This time, you know, Spence does a nice job keeping it wow, just feeling where the wide receiver is, locating the ball in the air, putting a hand up. That's great. It's a veteran secondary mm, yes. for the Crusaders. They picked off New Hampshire quarterback Max Brosmer three times last week. I mean, they really can pass defender. Now, timeout called by the Jackrabbits. With eight seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, there have been a lot of high moments for the Jacks in this terrific season, including October 15th at the Fargo Dome. John Stigelmeyer remembers it well. We were talking to him this week. Number two, South Dakota State at number one, North Dakota State. Jacks got down 14 to nothing. They did not flinch. They would score 16 unanswered in the second half. Hunter Dustman hit three field goals, including the game winner. The defense in the second half was brilliant. 23-21 the final. And the Jacks have been the number one team in the country ever since. And John Stigelmeyer talked about how that was a defining moment in their season leading them to this point. So out of the timeout, third down and goal to go for South Dakota State. Davis in the backfield. They want to throw. Gronowski incomplete over the top of Wolf. And again, pretty good coverage in the end zone. Reynolds was on Wolf short of the goal line. And it'll be another field goal attempt, the third of the game already for Dustman. So this Holy Cross defense is maybe bending a little bit, but they're not breaking for some third field goal attempt. I think they've been really good stopping the run. And they really have. I think that's obviously the number one goal for Scott James' unit today. As Dustman will set up for a 23-yard attempt. He hit from 29 moments ago. To make this a one-point game, he has done it. So it's now 7-6 to six with a couple of ticks left in the first quarter. They expire. And a pretty entertaining first 15 minutes. Yeah, it's been back and forth. I think Holy Cross got some momentum early on, capitalized. But here's South Dakota State, the number one team in the nation, showing they're here to play. We've got a fun ball game here in South Dakota. Holy Cross leads South Dakota State 7-6 to six here in the second quarter. And Brookings, South Dakota defensive coordinator for Holy Cross, Scott James, telling us this week they would know very early on how their defensive line would fare against South Dakota State. And I've been watching them on the sidelines. And James been coming to his defensive line after every series happy. He said, keep doing what you guys are doing. Stay in there. It's been a little bit of a bend, don't break. They've been really efficient in the red zone defensively. Rocky, what have you seen? No. I think they've been great. Look, they have they've held South Dakota State to 68 rush yards, but they've had a 15-yard rush and a 14-yard rush. Those two big ones. Outside of that, it's not been much. The thing to watch, guys, is can they keep this up for four quarters? Do they get worn down as this game goes on? That's something to watch. Scott James was at New Hampshire before his good friend Bob Chesney called five years ago. Part of that terrific staff for Holy Cross having an unbelievable year. 12-0. Outright Patriot League champs for the fourth straight year. That's a conference record. 
So Adam Bakian, and that's good oh, news yes. for South Dakota State. The All-American has missed the last month of the season with a leg injury. It, I mean, just look, he's missed the last month, and he still leads the team in tackles, okay? That's all you really need to know about Bach. They're really happy to have him back out there. Oh, another bobbled wow. snap. Sluka recovers again, but he's in trouble. And he is going to be swarmed under by a sea of blue. Freeman and Adam Bach get there. That is the third time that Holy Cross has put the football on the turf. And, and this is the second time. It's really just been a concentration thing for, for Sluka. You know, look, your mind's turning. You got the best defense in the FCS rushing at you. I know there's a lot to think about, but it, it starts and ends with that snap. You can't do anything without securing that first. And again, made the much more interesting because they don't do this. I mean, they've turned right. it over just five times all year. Second down and long. Sluka trying to get some back on the feet. And he'll get to the 25-yard line. So now third down and long. Caleb Sanders, the outstanding defensive tackle. Big senior captain made the stop there for the Jazz. Caleb Sanders is one of the best defensive players in the FCS. And when we talked to Bob Chesney today, or excuse me, early in this week, asking what are the main factors in this game, he said the biggest thing is we got to block 99. If we don't block 99, it's going to be a long day. So you can see what kind of impact that guy has on a football game. They need the 35-yard line to keep this drive alive. Otherwise, they're going to have to punt it away, and South Dakota State would get decent field position. Here's Sluka, all kinds of time. Now stepping up, throws on the run, and he's got Coker at the 40-yard line for a Holy Cross first down. It's a good job of just the offensive line holding up just long enough. And Sluka doing a good job keeping that play alive until he gets his best wide receiver up in the middle of the field. This is what Sluka wasn't doing in the spring of 2021. Correct. He was running around, creating, extending. It's been the difference. After that 14-yard gain to the air again, Sluka on time to Spencer Gilliam. And that's going to be another first down as we go back down to Taylor. To your point, I was talking with Sluka this week, and he said the biggest change for him personally is he feels like he's grown in his downfield passing attack. Last time they were here, they felt like South Dakota State really forced them to be one-dimensional, but he's now grown as a quarterback, so he felt like this week it's important to get the run game going, but they want to take shots downfield as well. Yeah, Holy Cross has always been known for defense and special teams and running the ball not historically known for the passing attack you're right taylor that is the difference they have that downfield passing attack led by sluka this year that was just sluka's second career start i mean just think of how much he has learned <laughs> since that loss here in brookings about 20 months ago yeah he's learned and played a ton of football and you know he eats sleeps and breathes it as we talked to the coaches about and as I said, if they want to win this game, he's got to be the best player on the field here today. He's doing a decent job. Scored on a 56-yard touchdown run on the opening series. He's going to throw here, and it's underthrown and nearly intercepted by Dallas Beanham. Starting at corner for Malik Lofton, who's unavailable today. That's a great play by number seven. Just another time putting the ball in harm's way. Right? We've talked about the turnovers, and you know, Sluka's saying maybe wanting to adjust that route with Beanham being right on him, but he can't throw that football. That's huge. Lucky that didn't get picked. Just three INTs all year for Sluka. Third down and five. Run play, and that's not going to be close enough for Jordan Forrest. The fourth string running back getting an early carry. So now fourth down for Holy Cross. And what do you expect Bob Chesney to do here? I think you've got to punt this football away, don't you? Try to pin him back. That's what I would do. He has gambled already once today, and it kind of blew up on him with that onside kick after the it, touchdown. It, it, exactly. And your defense has overall played well. This is a risky move here, in my opinion. Fourth and four. They're 12 for 22 on fourth down this year. That's not a bad number. Clearing the box out. They want to throw for it. Nope, Sluka's going to tuck it and run, and he's got it. First down Crusaders as Matthew Sluka... The best running back in the country who happens to play quarterback picks it up on his feet. It was very similar to what they did earlier, Clay, on Sluka's long run. They motion the running back out, and they get one of those defenders moved out of the box, 
right? It's a numbers game, and then Sluka just breaking tackles. I think they're Bob Chesney saying, look, we're going to bet our quarterback's better than your guys out there, and he converts. That's what uh, their offensive coordinator, Chris Smith, said. Best running back in the country. He just happens to be a quarterback. <laughs> He's a play quarterback. <laughs> First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Crusaders on the march. Peter Oliver in the backfield. Here comes the big man again. And South Dakota State read that well. Peter Oliver out of Auburn, Massachusetts. That's a, a, a bicycle ride away from the Holy Cross campus. Oliver not really been able to get going here. They're going to keep going to him because he's such a big weapon on this team. Top 10 in program history in rush yards. But these Jackrabbit defensive linemen, as we talked about, I mean, and these guys are big. We're down on the field watching them, their offensive line, defensive line. Their, their size and speed combo play, I think, is what really sets this defense apart. Tenth play of the drive. It's Sluka again. He's hitting the backfield. And he's cut down at the 33. There's Caleb Sanders again. And the Holy Cross spent an entire week worrying about big number 99. And just for a big guy, he's so athletic. Look, he's going to spin, fighting for he's getting held. But look at the division. Spin right out. There's the quarterback. Bring him to the ground. He's like a rolling ball of butcher knives out there. He's just <laughs> fighting, scratching, calling, flipping, spinning. And watch, keep it on his bull rush later on. He's got one of the best bull rushes I've seen. Tyler Purdy in the backfield. Jordan Fuller, the number two running back. Didn't make the trip, so Purdy and Forrest getting some action today. Sluka looking to throw downfield on third down. Can he pick it up? Wow. He's going to be darn close. Matthew Sluka. Either way, it's going to be a first down or fourth and manageable. Guy that just relishes contact, Matthew Sluka, especially early on in football games. It gets him in the feel of it. Yeah, he'll go to Chris Smith, the offensive coordinator, and say, hey, coach, call a play where I get hit here. <laughs> Chris Smith's like, what? We don't want our quarterback getting hit if we don't have to, but he likes to get all lathered up and get in the flow of the game. They're going to go for it here on fourth and short. QB sneak. Sluka away from center. Pop oh. pass from the running back man. Wide open at Sean Morris, the tight end. Holy cow, what a play call. Well designed, a 27-yard touchdown. Wow. And this place just went definitely quiet. That's one of those plays you, you, you've probably run since the spring, and at a, the perfect time, you know you're going to pull it out and Here's when it was. Everybody, look at all those blue jerseys packing that offensive line at the line of scrimmage. And then, I mean, just how do you stop that? I, I, you know, you think it's going to be a QB sneak. You're getting up in that gap, fourth and a half a yard. Just a great play call by Chris Smith and Bob Chesney there. Derek Ng tacks on the extra point. Tyler Purdy expected to see more playing time at running back today because Jordan Fuller did not make the trip. He's called on to throw a pass, and it's right on the money to the All-Patriot League tight end, Sean Morris, and Holy Cross has South Dakota State on its heels early. Now, he's kind of hard to see there. Chris Smith, former Crusader offensive lineman in his first season as play caller, might be the best offense that Holy Cross has ever had. It uh, looks like a lumberjack. I was going to say, he looks like a guitarist for Leonard Skinner, but, uh, <laughs> but he's actually a really good play caller, which we saw on that last play there. That was phenomenal. We've seen some interesting designs today for Smith. He said he's not going to cut his hair during the win streak. <laughs> it's been a long win streak. 12-0 this year. Derek Ng kicks off. It's a short kick. Jaden Yonke. Lost the football on the opening kickoff of the game. He's a good return man. And dives out across the 30, just short of the 35-yard line. 25-yard return for Jaden Yonke. Holy Cross may have gone into their bag of tricks here early. And now the officials have to come in and separate the players. How about opening series, the flea flicker? Yeah, I mean, look, if you want to come in and beat the number one team in the nation, you got to pull out all the stops. Now, this one didn't work so well. And then they try the onside kicks, which they also didn't work so well. But then it, it finally pays off for them. And this is just almost an unstoppable play. you got everybody bearing down. 
close to the red zone there, fourth and short. I feel like that's a play, you know, there's just different like Vogue plays you see during the course of a season. I feel like I've seen that a few times and it is absolutely deadly. A couple of 75 yard scoring drives for Holy Cross and now South Dakota State will try to get its first touchdown. They've had to settle for field goal attempts on their three series. Isaiah Davis on that carry, he'll get six yards. And that's the thing, if you're South Dakota State, you say, look, we got to score here because if they're getting touchdowns and we're getting field goals here, all of a sudden that, that gap starts to widen. They're not going to be able to lean on that run game late the way they have this whole season. Second down and four from 39. South Dakota State 10-1 and all-time in home playoff games. They're down here. Middle stages of the second quarter. Mark Gronowski going down the field. He's got a man caught by Zach Hines, the tight end. Down to the 32-yard line, the six-foot-seven big man. And they've been trying to find Hines a few times today, and they finally got him. And we've seen this streak play. Just hasn't been open, but... I mean, perfect throw by Gronowski on the outside shoulder, and that's against one of the best linebackers in the FCS, Liam Anderson. But just the height differential and that perfect ball placement, it's hard to stop that. Hines out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, one half of the best tight end duo in the FCS, you could argue. Absolutely. He and Kraft. They hand it off to Davis. Sheds tackles as he gets through the first wave of defenders and then stacked up at the 25-yard line. That's a gain of seven, John Smith. 54 career games since 2018. He makes the stop. And second down and short here for South Dakota State coming up. Now I talked about the last drive, about, you know, this Holy Cross D-line has done well, but can they keep holding up? Davis again, powering his way to the 15, carrying men to the 12-yard line. What a powerful run for Isaiah Davis. First down. For South Dakota State. This run attack is just like a sledgehammer, right? Behind Davis just swinging it, just pound you away, pound you away, and all of a sudden, as the game goes on, start missing a few tackles and one yard runs turn into five yard runs. You know they're gonna stay with this run game. He's been their bell cow since Pierre Strong left for the NFL. Fourth round pick of the Patriots last year. First down and 10. Play action, Gronowski to the end zone, and he overshoots Kraft. He had his tight end zeroed in. A little bit too much mustard on it. And you can tell they <laughs> they know Tucker Kraft is a playmaker. They had about three guys on him, I think, on that play. But still, a, a perfect throw would have had him. You can see, look, there's three guys on him. <laughs> That's a tough throw, but... Uh, Again, you can know number 85 is going to draw a lot of attention. It reminds a lot of people around here, Dallas Goddard, who yeah. played at South Dakota State, now in the NFL with the Eagles. They'll go back to Davis, and not a lot of operating room on the right side of the formation, so it's going to be third down and fairly long. Terrell Prince stepping up from his strong safety spot to make the tackle. And this is a big play here in the first half. This is, and just... As you say that, they're bringing both the Yonke brothers back in, Jaden Yonke and Jackson Yonke, one and 10. You have to figure they're gonna go to the air here. Identical twins, six foot three, 210 pounds. Two of seven farm kids from Madison, South Dakota. Tucker Kraft out wide to the top, coming in motion now. Here we go, big play, third down and nine, Gronowski. Fakes the handoff, now running, trying to pick up the first down. Did he get enough? Diving ahead, I don't know. It's going to be close. He gets inside the five. And I think it's going to be fourth down. And you can see South Dakota State was trying to sneak Tucker Kraft across underneath the line, the line there, but Liam Anderson was not fooled. And you see the rallying of those white jerseys here. Oh, he got it. He got the first down. He yeah. got it. Just barely picked up the first down. So it, first down and goal to go. In a month ago, that would not have been an option with him using his legs like that. But the leg, the knee feeling better now, picks up a huge first down. Yeah, he was telling us this week, 100% healthy on that knee. And now Davis straight ahead, and he cannonballs in for a touchdown. His 13th rushing touchdown of the year. 
First touchdown for South Dakota State. And, and that was just a prototypical South Dakota State drive. Run the ball, pound the rock, get a couple big plays out of your tight end, and then down this area of the field, we'll just right, run right behind the 605 Hogs. <laughs> that, of course, stands for the area code here yeah. throughout the entire state of South Dakota. They are led by their two captains on the left side, Mason McCormick and Garrett Greenfield, the guard and tackle, respectively. Going for two here. And that's going to be an easy two-point conversion for Davis to tie this one up at 14. And, and what a great play call here. South Dakota State, they run the ball. It's what they do, and they really got it going on that play. They get the touchdown to Isaiah Davis, and then the two-point conversion, couple extra offensive linemen on the field. South Dakota State has recaptured the momentum here. South Dakota State ties it up. Eight-play touchdown drive and a two-point conversion, knotted at 14 apiece. Some great names in Jack's football history including the late Jim Langer, great Miami Dolphins center, NFL Hall of Famer. Adam Timmerman won a couple of Super Bowls, one with the Packers, one with the Rams. Adam Vinatieri, of course, <laughs> the golden toed man from Rapid City, NFL's all-time leading scorer, four-time Super Bowl winner. And we talked about Dallas Goddard, excellent tight end with the Eagles. Now, I played two seasons with Adam Vinatieri and the Colts. I love the fact that his picture is in black and white. That's how old he is. <laughs> right. Just kidding, Vinny. I'm just messing with you, buddy. What a great guy he was. Longtime teammate of yours. And uh, Tucker Kraft could be the next great yeah. future NFL man out of South Dakota yeah, State. Yeah, the coaches talk how well he's going to test at the combine, which is always a huge factor. That's into the end zone, so Holy Cross will get it back at the 25-yard line. Been impressed by Matthew Sluka here today, the quarterback for Holy Cross. Uh, he's fearless, there's no doubt about it. We've seen some ball handling mistakes. Those are rare for him, but there is no doubt he is electric and fun to watch. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of the, the good and the bad you're gonna get with him. He's such a playmaker, he's gonna make things happen, he's gonna create, but you know, a few other concentration things, if he can clean that up here, they can get back in this game. 145 yards of total offense so far for the Crusaders. Sluka changing direction and trying to outrun Dallas Beanham. Gets to the sideline and he's escorted out at about the 32 yard line. Let's go down to Taylor. Kill. Kale Reeder came out of the game a couple series ago, has been dealing with a right hand injury, went into the locker room, he came back out, they're taping it up on the sideline, so something to keep your eyes peeled as he's one of their best DBs. Uh, free safety junior out of Yorkville, Illinois. And again, they're already down starting corner Malik Lofton. Second down and three. Running play here, Oliver banging his way for the first down. It's a great job getting Oliver involved in this game. Runs right behind the pulling left guard, Eric Schoen. And, and this is important here, Clay, because if Holy Cross can keep a drive going here, run that clock out, get a score, they're going to get the ball to open up the second half. They can double dip. And this offense relies so much on their big offensive front, too. Speaking of injuries, Nicole Sofko, the starting center, not starting today, Jack McCauley, number 60, snapping it to Sluka. Play action, Sluka to the outside, and that is caught near the first down marker. Byron Shipman, 10-yard pickup, and another first down for the Crusaders. That's a great drive they got going here on the ground, through the air. Like I said, just work that clock, keep moving the ball down the field. Still have your three timeouts. I mentioned that offensive line, Rocky. It's interesting what Holy Cross does. They rotate eight or right. nine guys up there, so they're fresh deep into the ball game. Yeah, you usually don't see that. I mean, the offensive line, these guys got to have continuity and be on the same page, but they've done it all year, and it's really helped them. Sluka, it looked like he was ready to hand it off. Maybe a busted play, and he'll pick up one. That's it. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened. It looked like he was going to hand that ball off to Peter Oliver, and I'm not sure if he saw something. What it was, but hmm. well, this has been an entertaining game. 
some interesting things that we've seen here in the first half so far. Tied at 14. Not quite as shootout like as we saw late last night in Carnet Ward in Sacramento <laughs> State. 66 63. 1,300 total yards in that game. Wow. And Carnet Ward with that upset. And now we get a timeout called here by the Crusaders. First time out called by Holy Cross under three minutes to go in the half. We're going to step aside and back in Brookings in a moment. Look at that. Some blue sky starting to appear. Trying to peek through. Eastern South Dakota. <laughs> Tied at 14. Late in the second quarter here in this FCS quarterfinal. Kick off your week 14 NFL Sunday with the countdown crew 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN. Before Brock Purdy makes his first career start for the 49ers, we're going to take a look at Mr. Irrelevant's journey to the NFL. Also, the dynamic Diggs brothers, Stefan and Trayvon. It's on NFL countdown. Second down and nine out of the Holy Cross timeout. Here's Sluka, batted down at the line, incomplete. Steven Orell, the cornerback on the blitz, reached up, got his hand on it, knocked it down. A great job. Great time to bring a corner blitz. If he didn't get rid of that ball, he was going to get crunched by Reese Winkleman on the other side. See 97 coming off the ball and beating it. And it's a great job. He's always changing up the look for that quarterback. You love Reese Winkleman because he reminds you of you. A little bit. He's out there playing with his hair on fire, man. I love it. <laughs> Third down and nine. And Jordan Forrest back in the game at running back. That's incomplete. Dyshawn Gales, first team, all Missouri Valley corner. Knocked that away from Gilliam. And what an excellent job by Gales right there. Zone defense, you got to have your eyes on the quarterback. Quarterback tells you everything. And when he cocks that thing to throw, you put your foot in the ground and break it. Watch. That was great. Just reading those eyes and anticipating that throw, breaking it out. That's a huge play right there, forcing a punt. South Dakota State ready to get it back with a couple of timeouts and a lot of time on the clock left. And now we're going to get a timeout called by the Jackrabbits, so they'll have one remaining before this punt. Another commercial break, 2.51 to go in the half. We think John Stigelmeyer spent that timeout because they had too many men on the field. And now after the timeout, Holy Cross ready to punt. Maybe punt. You never know. <laughs> They've had a couple trick plays so far in this game. I wouldn't count them out on it. Patrick Hogney, punter of the year semifinalist in the FCS, is back to kick. And Jaden Yonke, who muffed a punt last week against Delaware, ready to return. It's a high punt calling for the fair catch is Yonke. Wow. And South Dakota State will have it. One timeout remaining here before halftime. FCS championship coverage continues with semifinal action next weekend on ESPN2. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Last night, if you were asleep and missed it, Incarnate Word with an amazing win over Sacramento State, an upset over the number two seed, 66-63, highest scoring game in FCS playoff history. Yeah, combined 129 points scored in that quarter, eight total touchdowns in the fourth quarter. That's unbelievable. So now North Dakota State will get to play at home next week at the Fargo Dome. Gronowski is going to be dropped for a loss of one. There's Kunetsov, the big defensive end, second-year captain getting to the quarterback. This important drive here for South Dakota State, the way they've been running the ball and really imposing their will on the offensive line these last couple drives here. If they can work the ball down the field and score before half, that's huge. And even if they don't, they just don't want to give it back Correct. to Holy Cross uh, yeah. with time. That's the main thing you can't do. Holy Cross has, still has those two timeouts. Three receivers wide to the right. You got to take a shot here, don't you? That's what they're going to do. Gronowski going deep, looking for Jackson Yonke, and it's nowhere close. As Devin Haskins, who has four interceptions on the year, the excellent cover corner has given Yonke no room. Well, this corner's done a pretty good job here today, especially once they get down in the red zone. Eleven straight. FCS playoff trips for South Dakota State. Only North Dakota State has a longer streak with 13. So we go under two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Third down and 11, and it's Amar Johnson. 
Bangs into the line. There's Haskins wrapping him up and bringing him down. Quick timeout called for by Holy Cross as it's fourth down. And so the Crusaders poised to get it back here. Well, our Week 14 Monday Night Football matchup has Matthew Judon and the Patriots in Arizona taking on DeAndre Hopkins and the Cardinals 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. The Manning cast on ESPN2. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown. Must win for both of these teams' playoff chances, and they're slim at that. Yeah, Cardinals had a tough year going four and eight. This is interesting. Now, Holy Cross has blocked eight punts. Eight punts this year. So they were talking about something in the huddle there. Number four, Devin Haskins has four block punts. Terrence Spence, number two, he has three. Both blocked one last week. Dustman's punt. A little rugby style, and he got it away. <laughs> It's going to take a South Dakota State roll into the arms of Kreimer. Jared Kreimer looking for room on the far side, and not much there. Good pursuit by the Jacks. That, that was perfectly executed here. Get that rugby kick. Only one guy back there deep, deep with that thing roll a little bit. We talked to Stig about that. Coach Stig said, hey, we've got some things up our sleeve to avoid those punt blocks. Right, yeah, they were very well aware of, of what Holy Cross can do in the punt block game here. and. Uh, Whatever they organized for a game plan there, they executed perfectly. Minute 44, one timeout for Holy Cross. What do you expect here on this series? I, I think, look, if you're Holy Cross, they've been aggressive this whole game. You're coming in the number one team in the nation's house here. I, I expect them to continue to be aggressive. And I look for some point, Saluka's has got to find Jalen Coker, his best, most athletic wide receiver up at the top. Jordan Forrest, the running back, lines up wide. It'll be Sluka. As they spread the defense out, Sluka looking for room up the middle. He might get five on that. Stalbert, Sam Linebacker, the Nebraska transfer, makes the stop. As you look at the offensive coordinator, Chris Smith. <laughs> Love the purple handkerchief headband, too. That's cool. This program hasn't lost since last year's second round playoff game against Villanova. Oh. That's intercepted. Picked off Jason Freeman. Going back the other way. Touchdown, South Dakota State. Oh, what a momentum shift here late in the first half. Jason Freeman. With a pick six here in Brookings. Just a great job by Freeman. Same thing, keeping his eyes on that quarterback and goes to the hands of Asante. Big number 11's right there to pick it off. Huge turn of events here. Dustman on for the extra point. And it's 21 to 14 as South Dakota State has the lead now with a minute and eight seconds to go in the first half. Uh, Holy Cross Rocky has been flirting with turnovers all day, and finally the Jacks get a takeaway. Absolutely, and, and this is one, again, just goes right through the hands of, of Asante, a ball he should have had. He's on the shallow crossing route. Figure will use his speed to get down the field. If nothing else, he's got the speed to get out of bounds, and just a critical error there. And Jason Freeman's there to pick it up. Freeman, a former NAIA All-American, has become invaluable at linebacker for South Dakota State, especially with Adam Bach right. out. Uh, they were down some guys at linebacker for a time during the year, and guys like Freeman really answering the call. Yeah, it, it, as I said earlier, just I mean, this whole defense is their side and, size and speed combination is great at all three levels. And those linebackers, Freeman right there with the big pick six, Savion Williamson, Isaiah Stahlberg, all three of those guys, huge playmakers from this defense. Just the sixth turnover of the year for Holy Cross, the fewest total in the country in FCS. South Dakota State makes him pay just ahead of the half. And Ooh. it barely gets into the end zone. Kind of a lax move there by... 
the kickoff return unit. Justin Shorter, I think, assumed that was going into the end zone, and it barely got in. So we talked about Holy Cross being aggressive, and let's see how aggressive they are with 108. You know, I mean, I, I think early on here, you, you try to take a chunk yardage play, and if you're successful, then you put the foot on the gas and try to go score here. First down and 10 from the 25, Matthew Sluka. Cox is on, now tucks it. And he's going to get to the 31-yard line. He's got to move quickly. They do have one timeout remaining, and they're going to use it here. Yeah, he was trying to scramble forward, and he was able to get past those sticks. That clock would have stopped. Maybe they could have held on to that timeout, but they'll burn their last one. You said Sluka had to play well today. He's their rushing leader, 97 yards and a touchdown, but that interception has really yeah. changed the feel of this game in the first half. Well, let's go back to week two for Holy Mary Cross. Goes. That big Hail Mary play against FBS Buffalo as time expired. Sluka, 46 yards to the end zone. Jalen Coker in traffic, climbing up to get it. 37-31 the final. Second straight year with an FBS upset for Holy Cross. They beat UConn last year. It's about 17 blue jerseys down there. Coker with that 40-inch vertical snatches us. That's why you can never count out Holy Cross. Sluka still looking for an outlet, and he finds Coker. There's his favorite target. Coker's had so many big catches. Of course, the Hail Mary, and he had the game-winning touchdown against Sacred Heart last year. Program's first-ever playoff victory. Well, they got to find a way to get Coker deep here. First and ten to the sideline, intended for shorter incomplete. Clock stops with 40 seconds to go in the half. Second down and ten from the 43. I think Holy Cross has done a nice job today. They have stayed on schedule. They've rarely been behind the chains today. Uh, it really has just been their uncharacteristic turnovers that have been the, the huge factor. Sluka on second down. Got it to Coker. That's a first down and more. Gets inside the 45-yard line. Beanham will wrap him up. Out of timeouts. They hurry up to the line. He had Ayer Asante open down the left side of the field. Let's see if they go to him here. Another in route to Coker to the 35 as they're chipping their way down the field. Under 20 seconds to go. Yeah, get up the line here. Ayer Asante, top of the screen. He's got 4-4 speed. Going to take a shot. Sluka yeah. tried to get it to Gilliam. It's behind him, incomplete. Third down. Yeah. Inaccurate throw behind him. Stops the clock with eight seconds to go in the first half. 214 yards total offense for Holy Cross today. They lost here 31 to 3 back in the spring of 2021. Only 198 yards of offense in that entire game. It's been a pretty good showing here so far in the first half. Can they find a miracle here? Get into the end zone with only eight seconds to go. Safeties, all three safeties have moved deep for South Dakota State. We want to keep everything in front of them. Down the middle, that is tipped and almost intercepted. Isaiah Stalberg got a glove on it. Wow. Two seconds to go. And they're going to bring out the field goal unit. Derek Ng is going to try a long shot to get some points on the board before the half. Derek Ng, the best kicker in program history. has missed his last three field goal attempts. Weather has been a factor, of course, in recent weeks. His career long is 52. And that would be the case here this time. He's trying to hit a 52-yarder. That would match the school record. Just before the half, Ng, no, not this time. He was on target, just not long enough. So Holy Cross comes up empty on that final drive, and South Dakota State, thanks to the defense, 
which has been outstanding all year, takes the lead into halftime. It really is a defense, and I think that offensive line, you start to see it toward the end of that second quarter, starting to really impose their will on Holy Cross's defensive line, which has done a great job. It's just the 605 Hogs, as we talked about, all 300 pounders just lean on you all game long. Let's go down to Taylor. Thank you, Coach. A lot of creativity by Holy Cross and their play calling in the first half. What will you tell your team as to how to combat that in the second? Um, the creativity is fine. They're going to do things like that. we got to control the quarterback. He's the guy that's making things go on the scramble and the, and the throws and the called runs. He's a good player. How have you guys found efficiency in the red zone after they were able to stop you early? Well, we just made some plays. You know, Mark Gronowski, who called a naked, we called a boot, and it, it, they covered it, so he got the first down by running. That's good players making good decisions. I appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you. Clay? South Dakota State with the lead at the half in this FCS quarterfinal. Jackrabbits 9-0 and and leading at the half this year. They lead it by seven. That's a beautiful shot. After the snowfall yesterday, the Coughlin Campanile as we're back in Brookings, South Dakota for this FCS quarterfinal. At the half, 21-14, the number one seed, South Dakota State with the lead. Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Matvick, Taylor McGregor down on the sidelines. Holy Cross came in here in the spring of 2021 for a playoff game. It did not go well, lost by 28. Pretty good performance in the first half, but that Jason Freeman pick six for the South Dakota State defense changed the feel of that first half. It really did, and, and Sluka and Holy Cross being very aggressive. It worked most of that half there. That might have got away from right there. But with that said, this is still South Dakota State's first lead of the game. This is a critical opening drive Holy Cross has, but you can see early on here, I mean, Saluka with his legs has been great. Now, his accuracy in the pass game, a little much to be desired here, under 50%, but his legs have been deadly here today. Now, they did get a passing touchdown, but it came from the running back, Purdy, <laughs> and he got Sean Morris on a play nobody saw coming. Yeah, and this, this one you're talking about, the Freeman interception, that was a backbreaker right there. Even if they go in, just have to punt that ball away and have it tied at halftime. But again, a critical opening drive here for Holy Cross to get some momentum back. Here's a look at the first half stats. You can see Holy Cross up over 100 yards rushing, which is more, quite a bit more, than South Dakota State gives up on average per game this season. With that said, most of it coming from Sluka. Yeah, Sluka's been deadly, just running around, creating. But again, that, it's got to be more accurate in the throw game here this second half. They want to get back in it. That interception he threw just his fourth of the year. Critical moment in that first half. And like you said, the Crusaders will have the football to start the third quarter as they trail for the first time in this game. Kicking it off, Hunter Dustman into the end zone. And coming out with it is Justin Shorter from about four yards deep. And maybe wishes he didn't do that. Doesn't get to the 25-yard line. In fact, stacked up and driven down at the 17. As we go down to Taylor McGregor. Stay calm and stay the course. That is what Bob Chesney had to say to his quarterback, Matthew Sluka, at halftime. He said he needs to stay confident in the pocket and really try to find somebody downfield. He said receivers are open downfield. He's just getting a little jittery and just picking up the ball and running it or forcing something downfield. So they would like to see him stay collected in that moment. As for the creative Play call. He said, you better believe we're going to be creative here in the second <laughs> half. You have to be if you're going to try to knock off the number one team in the country. I like the spirit, Rocky, yeah, with the play calls from that yeah. first half. Why not? Peter Oliver running back. Running back 1A all season for the Crusaders. Gets the first carry of the third quarter. Gets four yards before the aforementioned Jason Freeman brings him down. Second down. And I feel like Oliver's guy that got to get going a little bit, right? Yeah. I mean, he's such a big part of this offense. If they can you have some productivity from the running back. That might make Saluka a little more comfortable back there in the pocket. That defense ain't going to be just teeing off on him, as Taylor talked about. They'll go three wide to the wide center of the field. But they'll go back to Oliver. And he powers his way across the 25, about a yard short of the line to gain. I'd argue that nobody loves Holy Cross more than Peter Oliver. He grew up in Auburn, a few miles south of the Holy Cross campus. His dad, Jeff, is head strength coach at Holy Cross. There he is with his dad. That's cool. I mean, grow up on this campus, and then now all of a sudden you're one of the 
top 10 running backs in program history. Has a pretty neat thing for that family. Sluka picks Ooh. it up and then runs into the machine, Jason Freeman. Boy, Freeman's having a day. Didn't get there quick enough to stop the first down pickup, but Freeman has been on fire. Talking about Peter Oliver. He was a Campbell Trophy finalist. The ceremony was on Tuesday night in Las Vegas. Did not win that award, but uh, a very smart young man. Yeah, absolutely. But there we see a good shot of Adam Bach again back in the game. Linebackers missed the last three games of the year, but in here today trying to make an impact. Play fake. Sluka, he's going to be dropped by Dyson Gales on the corner blitz. The all-conference junior from Chicago as South Dakota State gets home on the quarterback. Well, Bob Chesney talked about Sluka being a little jittery in the pocket. Well, this is why, because a combination of this D-line, and then we're seeing a lot of corner blitz. Look, the eyes are on the receiver, and then last second they come off and just finds that open lane and the speed to the quarterback. That'll make any quarterback jittery back there. So many playmakers for the Jackrabbits on defense. 12 different players with a sack this season. Second down in a mile. Sluka slides up. He's going to run to the 30. The 35 slips away. He's got the first down. Matthew Sluka has been the best offense for the Crusaders today. And we talked about it before the game. He's the guy that he wants the ball in his hand because he knows he's confident he can make a play. And I actually thought he had Spencer Gilliam open down the field, but he tucks it, runs it, breaks a few tackles, just as he did in the first half. Of course, he had that 56-yard touchdown run on the opening series. That's a gain of 21. He's got 117 on the ground now. Phoenix Dixon, the fullback, bouncing around in motion. They'll go back to the traditional ground game with Peter Oliver. This is the number six rushing offense in the FCS against the number one rushing defense. And Peter Oliver, a big part of it. For more on him, let's go back down to Taylor. We're talking about the relationship with his dad, Jeff, who's in his 27th season as a lead strength and conditioning coach. That photo we showed you, Peter said, that's pretty cool because the Holy Cross jacket that his dad is wearing in that photo is something that Peter now wears. So this is a program he's been around his entire life. He said he hears stories all the time about his dad carrying him around the facility, and now he's one of the most decorated players in program history. Great young man. Sluka directing traffic. Now getting behind his big lineman. And, man, bangs his way for another first down. The patience and the vision of Matthew Sluka. He'll get the eight yards necessary to move the chains. I'll tell you what, they, they were trying a route combination on the outside. A little high-low there, but it was well covered by South Dakota State. But, again, he just never gives up on the play and keeps it alive. And, again, getting the first down. You see, 15 rushes. That's been the difference, 125 yards. Still think, though, he's got to find a way to stay patient, stay in that pocket, and find some receivers downfield. Back to Oliver. And he'll get three. Sluka only completed six passes against New Hampshire last week. He was six for 16 with a touchdown. So I... There have been situations this year where he hasn't had to be dynamic through the air for them to win games. Last week was one of those occasions. Right. But, but I think, look, this South Dakota State, even though he's had success running the ball, South Dakota State stops the run. They're number one in the FCS at doing that. They've got to find a way to loosen this defense up in the pass game. Second down and six. Dixon again in motion, the fullback. High snap. Sluka keeps it again, and he finds some room. Goodbye to the outside. One man to beat to the corner, and he's pulled out inside the five, and a penalty marker comes in. Man, he just found a hole and burst through it. Matthew Sluka, another big play, and now a penalty to boot. Personal foul, face mask, number five, defense. That penalty's enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down, Holy Cross. That is the first penalty since Derek Ng kicked one out of bounds in the first quarter. And we've talked about South Dakota State's offensive line, but watch Holy Cross's offensive line. The left tackle, Luke Newman, getting up on the second level on the safety, Chase Norblade, and it's see you later. 
Great job, those offensive linemen getting to the second level. Excellent. So now first down and goal to go for Holy Cross. There's Oliver, and he's cut down short of the goal line. And no gain for Peter Oliver as DePriest, the defensive tackle, got him down. And DePriest just knifed in there and cut down Oliver before he could get going. Opening drive for Holy Cross here in the second half. And this is interesting. We talked about Holy Cross rotating in offensive linemen. They bring in two new offensive, fresh offensive linemen right here in this situation. Oliver to the left of Sluka. It's Oliver again, banging his way. Got a touchdown, Peter Oliver. Jordan Fuller has been their goal line in short yardage back all year. Didn't make the trip today, so they're counting on Oliver to get it done in close quarters. He does here to cap the drive. He does, and, and Oliver's so good between the tackles. Just kind of an old school runner, right? Power, high knees, driving, keeping him going. I'll tell you what, this offensive line did a great job on that too. Eric Schoen, the left guard, pulls around and leads the way. Derek King to tie it up. And he does. 21 apiece. Under nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Matthew Sluka again with his feet setting up the touchdown. Yeah, Sluka acting like Houdini out there, making <laughs> big plays with his legs, setting up the touchdown. Holy Cross back in this thing. 21 off. Back to even a 21 with 8.59 to go in the third. An 11 play, 82 yard drive for Holy Cross. Sluka getting that right arm looked at. A drive over six minutes for the Crusaders. And the winner of this game will get Montana State next week, the four seed all over William & Mary last night in cold Bozeman, Montana, 55 to seven. North Dakota State and the surprise right now, Incarnate Word after that shootout win over Sacramento State. They're in the other semifinals. So this is the last piece of the puzzle for the semifinal round. Tell you what, real impressed with Holy Cross coming out of halftime, 10 play drive all on the ground and punching it in. Jaden Yonke, he's been quiet as far as an offensive weapon. We've seen him in the return game. He gets across the 30 yard line to the 32 as the Jackrabbits will come back out. Or the Jackrabbit defense, it has been an inspiration this year. I mean, one of the best in the FCS, in fact, the best against the run in the FCS this year, but Holy Cross has found holes. It has, and obviously Matthew Sluka and his running ability and breaking tackles. I did think it was important. They did get Peter Oliver, the running back, going a little bit, which I think is going to be key down the stretch. Mark Gronowski, his first touch of the second half, and he's going to peel right through that first wave and pick up about four. Mark Gronowski again took the Jacks to the FCS title game in the spring of 21 coming out that ACL injury which he suffered on the first series in that game. He is itching to get back to the championship round. The captain 19 and 2 all time as the Jacks starter. Yeah, I mean, his development has just been great this year. I mean, there's so many weapons on this offense. We talked about, you know, of course, the Yonke brothers at the wide receiver spot. They got two great tight ends, good running game. He's just got to be the guy to manage this attack as it moves down the field. Well, Isaiah Davis is going to take the direct snap. He bounces off a body and now is driven back at about the 37-yard line. Very close. <laughs> To the 40 there, Christos Argus. That's the style. That's going to be a short pickup. So third down and about four coming up. I'll tell you what, it's impressive. Holy Cross's defensive line so far on this series. I talked about how early in this football game they were great, right? They were really building a wall up there toward the end of the first half. Looked like they got worn down a bit. They've come out here so far in the second half, rejuvenated. South Dakota State. 47% on the season on third down, 13th best in the FCS. They've been middling here today, three for eight. To the flat, Isaiah Davis after the catch, trying to get the first down. He is cut down, short of the line to gain, but penalty flags all over the place. Tell you what, John Smith, 
cornerback for Holy Cross. He's playing a heck of a football game. He doesn't make the tackle here, but he affects it. He's the one that actually pulls, pulls the penalty. That's his second straight week that it hasn't been a great game for Tucker Kraft. It really has. And you had the drop earlier on that play. Johnson, John Smith comes like a bullet out of the secondary and forces Tucker Kraft with the block in the back. Tucker Kraft missed the first half of the season with an ankle injury. Still first team all Missouri Valley, but he's had a rough couple of weeks. Did they decline the penalty yeah, here? Yeah, they did. They did decline the so penalty. That'd be a fourth and one. Yeah. So it's going to be fourth down and one. Or no, just fourth down, excuse me. Fourth down and about what, three, four here for South Dakota State? Yeah, and they're yeah. going to bring on the punting unit. Yeah. Okay. And of course, Holy Cross has eight block punts on the year, so you always got to be on the lookout for that when the Crusaders special teams units are on the field. Jared Kreimer. He's back to return. Another rugby-style kick from Hunter Dustman. Kreimer is going to let it bounce. Checks up. And it's dead inside the 25-yard line. Holy Cross has it. They have tied the game at 21 here in the third quarter. 7.02 to go. This guy has made a jackrabbit <laughs> out of snow and beer cans. <laughs> I it's love as good it. as it gets right there. <laughs> Back here in Brookings, tied at 21, this FCS quarterfinal. <laughs> Snuggling up to it. Yeah, he doesn't need a date for the game. This will work. How about the Crusaders alumni? Pretty impressive list, especially in sports journalism. Dan Shaughnessy, longtime Boston Globe writer. Bill Simmons helped create 30 for 30 on ESPN. And our own Burke Magnus, ESPN president of program. They turn out influential uh, folks in the media. All the cross, good stuff. They're rooting for the Crusaders to pull this upset against the one seed on the road today. Peter Oliver in the backfield again, but Sluka wants to throw and has all day to do it. Short throw caught and a good run after the catch. And that's going to be a first down or close to it for Asante, the speedy veteran out of Franklin Township, New Jersey. And, and they're still trying to challenge this defense downfield. They ran Justin Shorter deep down the middle of the field. It wasn't there, but it still keeps that defense thinking so it can't just keep collapsing up on the short stuff. Holy Cross, first time they touched it here in the second half, engineered a six-minute scoring drive to tie it up. Oliver hit in the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard second down. Let's go down to Taylor. Holy Cross having a lot of success on the ground on their last touchdown drive. Following that series, South Dakota State defensive line coach coming up and saying, hey, they are running C-gap power. We talked about it at halftime. We need to be able to stop that. Rocky, what have you seen? Yeah, well, what they're doing, Taylor, they're, they're pulling the offensive lineman. A, a lot of the times it's Eric Schoen, the left guard, pulling that around there, and they're trying to keep that thing inside, getting in that C-gap. Had some success with that last drive. Sluka on time to Gilliam. The senior out of San Antonio. Another nice play in the passing game as Sluka is now starting to find some rhythm. That's back to back first down. That was a great read he made, too, because they brought Sabian Williams and the linebacker off the edge. And as soon as he vacated, boom, he hit Gilliam on that quick slant there for the first down. Excellent recognition. We have seen South Dakota State, especially in the second half of games this year be completely dominant defensively but Holy Cross has already gotten into the end zone once here in the quarter and they're moving again Sluka and maybe two yards as Jared DePriest makes the tackle at the 45 yard line I'm just impressed with Sluka he's not afraid to just take that ball put it in his hands and run forward get whatever he can this is the number three scoring defense in the FCS, South Dakota State. Allowing under 15 points per game. Three of the last four opponents, they've held to seven or less, but Holy Cross has 21 on the board and looking for more. Dixon in motion. Oliver... 
to the right of Sluka. It will be Sluka on the keeper again, and South Dakota State read that well. No gain, Savion Williamson, the middle linebacker. Wow, watch the eyes of Savion Williamson. You gotta put the trash on, have him in front of you, out of your mind, follow the quarterback. Great job just reacting to that. You know, a lot of the motion felt like that was gonna be an inside A-gap run, but he saw the quarterback squirt out there. That was a great job. Jimmy Rogers, the former Jacks linebacker, 10th year on staff, first year as the defensive play caller, absolutely loves Savion Williamson. Big third down. Uh, looked like some movement on the right side, no penalties. Sluka stepping up. And now he's got room, he's got the first down and more into plus territory inside the 40-yard line. Sluka does it again, picks up 17 and a first down. Unbelievable, and South Dakota State had the perfect defense called. They just rushed three and they dropped Savian Williams and the linebacker back as a spy. His job is to tackle the quarterback when he starts to scramble, but it's just the athleticism. Watch, you see Williamson in the middle of the screen, dropping back, he's a spy, okay, just patient, patient, patient. When Sluka makes a break, he come get it, but just boom, right there, take makes a cut, leaves him in the dust. That's a, just a ball player making a play. Tyler Purdy, nowhere to go that time, but how about Matthew Sluka? Already a career high, 180 rushing yards on 19 carries. And that messes with you mentally as a defense. They have stopped the run all year long. And you can just tell, these guys are talking around down there saying, man, these guys are running the football on us. What's going on? Matthew Sluka, the Walter Payton Award finalist for the best offensive player in the FCS, originally came to the school to play lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you can see some of that, right? Lacrosse, it's a lot of, you know, reacting and running, running around. Absolutely. Now one of the toughest players, a quarterback in the FCS, dumps it off to Purdy, and he is hammered down inside the 35-yard line, a six-yard pickup. Dayton McGoy, the Sam linebacker, got to him. Here good, comes third down. Good job by Sluka, keeping that thing alive, keeping the eyes downfield as that pocket was starting to collapse here. Critical play. Love to see him find Jalen Coker, number 80, his best wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. So he can find a route combination, a pick play or something to get him loose. Ninth play of the drive for Holy Cross. Oliver slips. Uh, he was trying to kind of shift into another gear and it looks like he's got the first down anyway. And, and that was C-gap power that Taylor was talking about. Oh, this crowd did not appreciate that spot. Yeah, it might have been a beneficial spot here. Watch, we'll bring the tight end around. Goes, ball goes right in that C gap. A quick hitter. Couldn't tell from that angle if, if the spot was good or not. But nevertheless, first down. Another long drive for Holy Cross. Up over five minutes. Under a minute and a half to go here in the third. Oliver again. Powering his way to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down. Well, this afternoon, college basketball, a doubleheader. North Carolina hosting Georgia Tech in the ACC, 315 Eastern. Then Jalen Wilson at number six, Kansas, taking on 9-0 Missouri under new head coach Dennis Gates. Both games on ESPN and the app. FCS quarterfinals. Here in Brookings, South Dakota with Rocky Boyman and Taylor McGregor on Clay Mavic. Winner gets Montana State next week. And right now, this game hanging in the balance. Sluka sheds a tackle, and it's incomplete. Should have been caught by Coker. And he couldn't come up with it. Third down. Your best wide receiver. He did a good job just sitting down in that zone in some open space. I thought he was thinking about running before he had the ball secured. Interesting to see what South Dakota State does last time in this situation. They only rushed three and dropped the fourth guy into a spy. Except so they may bring some pressure though here. Sluka checking the play on third down and eight. Play clock inside of five. Sluka takes the snap. 
And lunging ahead, he's going to be well short of the line to gain. So fourth down and a big decision, maybe the biggest of the game here for Bob Chesney. They don't have to snap the ball here in the quarter. That'll give them a little more time to think about it, Rocky. What do you suggest? Well, and, and if, you, if you don't kick it here, I mean, right now you'd be kicking into the wind, so this may be a factor of why they're going to go for this. I, I don't love this decision here. It's going to be Sluka, though. And that's going to be the end of the quarter. We'll see if Bob Chesney rethinks it now that they're going to shift to the other side of the field. Tied at 21, this FCS quarterfinal will be decided in the fourth. Holy Cross with a decision here to start the fourth quarter in a tie game. It's either going to be fourth and four or they're going to attempt what would be about a 40-yard field goal from Derek Ng. It looks like that's what it's going to be here. And, and as I was saying, I think they wanted to get this thing into the fourth quarter where they now will be kicking with the wind as he attempts this. What, 40 yarder here. Missed a 52 yarder earlier. Like you said, the wind is a little more favorable on this side of the field. They're actually going to say a 39 yard attempt. Out of the hold of Patrick Hogney, the punter. And that is no good. Second miss for Derek Ng. He definitely had the leg. But it's the second time he's come up empty. And that's how the fourth quarter starts here in Brookings. The V Foundation Stewart Scott Cancer Research Fund honors Stewart's legacy by awarding grants to scientists and providing opportunities to researchers from diverse backgrounds. You can support as well. Visit v.org slash Stewart. After the field goal miss for Holy Cross, South Dakota State back on offense. Gronowski has a man wide open. It's Jaden Yonke. One of the Yankee twins to the 41-yard line. Great job. They run the ball so well. Now they stretch the field, get their best wide receiver, a little play action pass. You can see the linebackers get sucked up and drops that thing over top of the corner and in front of the safety. Excellent. That's Jaden's first catch. He had a couple of touchdown grabs against Holy Cross back in April of 2021. Offensively, he's been real quiet today, but it's a nice pickup for a first down. Isaiah Davis, a big run. First down and more into plus territory. Finally collared and dragged down at the 41 of the Crusaders. A gain of 18. And this is a play that is going to have high probability for success because you're pulling around Mason McCormick, a three-time all-conference lineman. You see him pull around, gets his shoulder squared, kind of meat hooks the linebacker there, but nevertheless, just a wide open lane for Isaiah Davis. When pulling those linemen around where they can really just get some momentum going and drive those safeties and linebackers out of the way, it's a big play. Isaiah Davis closing in on 100 yards. Might get it here. Now he's got it and more. Banging his way inside the 35-yard line. Well, Holy Cross had a chance to take the lead to start the fourth quarter, but Derek Ng now 0 for 2 today on field goal attempts. Best kicker in Holy Cross history has missed his last five field goal attempts. Two today. Yeah, that's tough. And there's, that's a game you're coming in to the house of the number one team in the nation. You've got to get those points right there. That's unfortunate for Holy Cross. Second and three, Amar Johnson has checked in. They fake the handoff to him. Gronowski had a man wide open, Jaden Yonke, and it sailed on him. And Gronowski, I, I think he took a shot. And they're getting a, a two deep look here. And second time they've tried this out route, this corner out of the sideline. Let's see what happens. It looks like Jake Reichwein gets in there and a little shot to the stomach there. I think oh, that hurts. He's tough, though. He's staying in there. These are two of the toughest quarterbacks in the country. <laughs> yeah. Gronowski and Sluka. Third down and three. Here's Davis. Look at that power. Junior from Joplin, Missouri. 
has a touchdown run in this game. He's got another first down carry. He'll move the chains as he gets inside the 25-yard line. It's just it's hard to stop. You got two big tight ends, Kraft and Hines, off to the right. You're pulling around an all-conference offensive lineman. That's just hat on a hat, man on a man. Punchy in the mouth football. That's what South Dakota State does so well. Today's his 14th career 100 yard game. He's got 112 yards. Seven have come in the playoffs. I mean, if it's a big game, Isaiah Davis is going to be there. Here he goes again. It's like trying to tackle a deep freeze. <laughs> Yeah, this is offensive lineman, and as I said, I, again, I think we're seeing just the power and the strength and the size of this offensive line. All 300 pounders across the board just leans on a D line, wears you down. He'll come out for a breather. Lamar ja Johnson, who's been very productive since mid-October, he comes in. Behind Gronowski in the pistol. Everybody in the box right now for Holy Cross. Yeah, penalty flag. Might have a false start. Fire the snap. Ball start. Number 87. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Now, tight ends continue to struggle for South Dakota State. Yeah, that was Hines leaving a little early, but. I mean, Holy Cross is doing everything they can to stop the run. Again, on that last play, had everybody down in the box. There's John Stiglmeyer, 26th year as head coach, national coach of the year, Missouri Valley coach of the year for the second time. Gronowski, a little pressure, got rid of it to Kraft. Bounces away from the tacklers. Lowers his shoulder and just bulldozes his way for a first down. And that's why he's going to get drafted. And we've been waiting on a big play by Tucker Kraft. He had the drop earlier, had the penalty. <laughs> but now he shows again why, as you said, why he's going to be a top 50 pick in this next draft. Right there on the outside. Just creates a little separation and then just breaking tackles. I mean, that's a big man to try to bring down. He, he don't go down easy. Declared for the draft last month, but said, hey, I'm riding this out until we lose our last game or win a championship. I give him a lot of credit for that, by the way. You don't see that as much in today's college football. He wants to be with this team. No leaving early for him, and now another flag. Hard for 78. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. That time, the right tackle, John O'Brien, the Bowling Green transfer. When we talked to John Stiglmeyer this week, he was so gracious about his awards, so humble. Said, hey, those are team awards. Yeah, I mean, anytime you try to get him to talk about himself or anything, he always deflects <laughs> it back to the team, doesn't he? Love him. Just an old school guy. He's just been so good for a long time here at South Dakota State. Grew up a farm kid in Selby, South Dakota, right along the North Dakota state line. And another incompletion here for Gronowski. There was pressure coming from Dylan Springer. He just got rid of it. It's the second time they've tried that tight end underneath route, and it's not fooled. Holy Cross's defense. So second and 15. Offensive coordinator again is Zach Lujan, just 27 years old, former Jacks quarterback. And he has had a great first year as the OC calling the plays. It's only six years ago he was the quarterback of this team. <laughs> now he's up in the box doing a great job. Second and 15. This is what he draws up. Open man, it's Yankee. Jackson Yankee, a touchdown. South Dakota State. Well, they put both the Yonke twins out the left side. Just a little double slant combination here. And just a good job of catching that thing and making the corner miss. And then the power into the end zone. They, these guys have been great. Big moment in the game. Get some of your best players. 
Terrell Prince went for the strip instead of the tackle. Might have kept Yankee out of the end zone. As it happens, Jackson gets in for his seventh receiving touchdown of the year. That's a team high, and Dustman tacks on the extra point. And South Dakota State goes back in front. It's a great job. I mean, just time in, time out. South Dakota State, they just respond. They answer, putting together a big drive there, a lot on the ground. And they get the ball to Jackson Yonke for the touchdown. 10.08 to go in this quarterfinal. South Dakota State now leading at 28-21 as Jackson Yonke. Great individual effort after the catch to get into the end zone to cap that nine-play 78-yard drive in 448. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of the way this offense is. You know, again, beginning of the week, I turn them on. Okay, wow, let's watch the number one team in the country. And not super explosive offensively, right? But they just wear you down. They don't make mistakes. They do have playmakers at every single spot. And they just keep wearing you down, and they've been doing it all year. And that was the second offensive touchdown today for South Dakota State. Oh. Now a mistake by Hunter Dustman. He kicks it out of bounds. So each King side King has kicked one out of bounds at the 35 yard line today. First down, Holy Cross. Let's go back to that scoring drive for South Dakota State. Uh, the big play before the Yankee touchdown, Tucker Kraft picking up that first down. Also a great individual effort. Yeah, this was a big play here. I mean, look, there's two white jerseys right there. Somebody's going to bring him to the ground, right? Nope. Tucker Kraft breaks some tackles and then, again, double slant route. Breaks a couple tackles himself. Uh, again, it's just individual efforts by a lot of players across the board for the South Dakota State team. Just makes them so deadly. Second straight week, Jackson Yankee with a playoff touchdown. Had one in that same end zone last week. A beautiful catch on the end line. So now Holy Cross, it's their turn to go to work here. Down a touchdown as Matthew Sluka has been the best offense for the Crusaders using his feet. This time a short gain as Dyshawn Gales makes the tackle, pick up a three. Interested to see how South Dakota State's defense plays this. Because you know in this moment in the game, Sluka, the way he's been going, he's going to run the ball. He's going to keep it. He wants to keep it in his hands. So do they try to spy him? Do they bring a safety out of the middle of the field as an extra hat in the box? And with it. They know they got to stop number nine now. Sluka again. Ooh, so dangerous. Ankle tackle by Williamson. Otherwise, Sluka might have been off, just like we saw last week against New Hampshire. He's real close. I mean, he slips one tackle right there by Savian Williamson. Just starts running. And he hesitates. Reads a little bit. Where's it at? There's the hole. Couple of nice blocks. And he's just real patient. And, you know, I think he really sees the field well. 22 rushes, 200 yards today. That's a career high. He's averaging nine yards per carry. On first down, play action pass. Luca to the flat. Justin Shorter tries to shed a tackle, but Tucker Large, the walk on. Made the Missouri Valley all newcomer team this year is able to wrestle him out of bounds. And, and this is so important. This is the cat and mouse game, right? You, you, you got to load the box. You got to stop Sluka with the run game. It's important for Holy Cross to still try to stretch that defense out, get some perimeter pass plays so they can just hone in on stopping nine. That was the first catch today for Shorter. Seven different receivers used today by Sluka as he's up over 100 yards passing now as well. Second down and five on the draw. Sluka lowers his shoulder, and it looks like he's got another first down. Man, you talked about it in the first half, Rocky, about he is not afraid of contact. In fact, he absolutely loves it. He, he relishes it. He's, he, he really does. And it's so important to have a quarterback who's fearless. Fearless mentally, or he's not scared to make a mistake. Fearless physically, or he's not afraid to take a big hit when his team needs it. He's been great today. Under eight minutes to go. 28-21, the number one seed, South Dakota State on top. Sluka again gets to the edge. 
And another good run on first down, a pickup of five. Taylor. To South Dakota State's defense down here on the sideline. They feel like Sluka's running all over them and they say, we're being tested, let's respond. Second down and five now. Luca under pressure, tripped, hit, and swallowed up at the 50-yard line. Caleb Sanders, number 99, answers the bell again. What did Bob Chesney say to us this week? Number one priority, we got to block 99. And they, they bring Savion Williamson right up the gut. And there he is, the whole host of defensive linemen. Stop and Sluka. I, I like that. You know, bring some pressure. Just negate any rush lanes for Sluka to escape from. It was risky, but it really worked out well right there. That was actually Ryan Van Marl that yeah, finished yeah. Sluka off, the senior from Sheldon, Iowa. So now third down and 18. And they're going to whistle this play dead. I think we had a false start for the Crusaders. Carlos snap, false start from the 69. That's the all-conference right guard, C.J. Hansen, and believe it or not, that is the first penalty today for Bob Chesney's squad. And Bob Chesney saying, look, hey, we got to maintain our composure to stay positive here. This is a critical play in this game. And as you can see, it looks like the Jackrabbits just going to rush three here. And I think Savion Williamson will be the spy. He's got to try to hunt down Sluka should he take off. They drop eight in a prevent defense here on third and 23. Pressure coming. Sluka got rid of it. And it's almost intercepted. Lands incomplete. Fourth down as Dallas Beanham, who's had a great game, disrupted that play. It's a great job. Just keep everything in front of you. Read the quarterback's eyes and break on the ball. And my guy, Reese Winkleman, with the pressure down the bottom of the screen. Nice get off, slapping those hands away, forces the throw. And a great job on the break. And you know it's killing Bob Chesney to have to punt here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if, it, were, if yeah. it were fourth and five or six, he yeah. would probably go for it. But Agreed. Agreed. Fourth and 23, they have to kick. Jaden Yonke has some real estate. And decent field position here for the Jacks starting at the 32 as they want to kill some clock. 5.45 to go. Jack Rabbits leading by seven. 28-21, 5.45 to go here in Brookings. The FCS championship coverage continues with the semifinals next weekend on ESPN2. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. South Dakota State, 11-1, the number one seed. They've been number one in the FCS since mid-October when they went to Fargo and upset number one North Dakota State. The Bison are in the semis against Incarnate Word. Winner of this one takes on Montana State next week. Isaiah Davis and the South Dakota State run game. They're going to go to work now, Rocky, and try to eat up clock. <laughs> and this is what you live for if you're a Jackrabbit offensive lineman, right? 5.30 to go in the game. I mean, they have a chance to just pound away, pound away, run this clock down, and get out of here. This is exactly the situation, this four-minute offense that they live for. They win this game. They get a rematch with Montana State. Remember, the Bobcats beat the Jacks in the semifinals last year in Bozeman. This time, they'd be able to host next week. Second and two. It's Davis again, feeling his way, gets to the outside. He's got the first down and a ton more. What a stiff arm. Good night. Isaiah Davis throwing bodies around like ragdolls. 
Terrence Spence just thrust out of bounds as he took a right from Isaiah Davis. Is that Marshawn Lynch running out there, or is that Isaiah Davis? Good job. He was stopped for about a negative yards play, but then, yeah, just the toss with a stiff arm. Here's a great angle, great camera shot here by our crew, and he knows it. If that's not all over Twitter by the end of the day, something's the matter. Absolutely. That's a highlight of this entire game. Well, he did something similar in the national title game yeah. against Sam mm -hmm. Houston in the spring of 21 on a touchdown run. Now going downfield, Gronowski. He wanted Hines. Fans want a penalty flag. None thrown as Dante Bolden was in on the coverage. Yeah, it, it looked like, I mean, because Bolden never... Never even made an attempt to look back at the football there, and his hands were all over him. Might have gone away with one. Let's take a look at it. It's a little double seam route down the, by the tight ends. Yeah, it, yeah, it looked like he pulled like that left arm as he was trying to get it up. So the clock stops momentarily. Second and ten. Out to the flat, man wide open, it's Jaden Yonke. Makes a man miss and dives inside the 25-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Wow, I, I love that play call there because it looks like it's going to be a power to the right behind the two tight ends and the pulling guard. But just a little wrinkle, shoot that thing out to Jaden Yonke. Watch, that looks like it's run all the way, but boom, pull it out and, and hit the perimeter. And again, the other Yonke making a guy miss. And the two Yankees come off the field here. Jaden and Jackson. Third down and a yard. They bring in Isaiah Davis to pick it up. Can he do it? Yes, he can. First down, South Dakota State. They'll keep possession here. As we go under three and a half to play. And that's a backbreaker right there. I expect South Dakota State to really slow things down here. And they don't even need a touchdown. Any points on this drive will be crushing yeah. for Holy Cross. Uh, exactly. That's why you also, it's even maybe more important to just waste some clock down. Not give Matthew Saluka any opportunity to come back here. Mark Johnson back in the backfield with Gronowski. Jackson Yankee hopping in motion. It will be Gronowski on the keeper. And he's dragging a tackler inside the 20-yard line. Finally stood up after a four-yard gain. And a timeout called for down on the field. Nope, no timeout. Pardon me. It looked like Chesney was out on the field calling a timeout, but yeah, he didn't. Clock's still running. And both teams have three timeouts. And now, wait a second, we do have a timeout. Yeah, I, I think but Chesney was saying to the official, hey, look, I call a timeout here, and it's ticking away. So a timeout. They will reset the game clock. But time is running out on Bob Chesney's Crusaders. Nolan Dumas and the Southland officiating crew getting a tutorial on time management <laughs> from Bob Chesney. <laughs> yeah, he's making his case. Hey, look, I, I called a timeout, and I want 2.45 on the clock, all right? 2.45, yeah. It didn't stop until 2.23. They did put the time back up there. After the timeout, South Dakota State, second down and six. Isaiah Davis in the backfield. Jack's leading by a touchdown. Looking to ice this game away. Here goes Gronowski. Nobody in front of him. Touchdown, South Dakota State. And that might be the haymaker. Zach Lujan, the play caller. This is a beauty. Watch this. And this is looking like power to the right. Everything is going the right, but just the wrinkle. Now we're going to just let that quarterback keep it. And you see Prince just dives down too far inside. And you know Lujan, the play caller, saw that a couple plays previously. Hey, that guy's getting too far, washing down inside. Let's pop that thing out. He did it in six points.
Scott James, the defensive coordinator for Holy Cross, said this week, we've got to seal the edge against this Jackrabbits running game. They don't do it here, and now it's a two-score lead for the Jacks. South Dakota State University, one of the great agriculture institutions in the upper Midwest, and the dairy bar over there where they can uh, whip up some ice cream pretty fast and uh, tons of flavors over there. We got to get some of that before we yeah, leave on town. The way out of town, we got to get some. There's great things about it. Great people here in Brookings, South Dakota. They have treated us well. We hope you've enjoyed this FCS quarterfinal, which is now feeling more and more like it's going to be a victory for the Jackrabbits, the number one seed, and a rematch between the Jacks and the Bobcats next week here in Brookings. It was Montana State that beat South Dakota State last year in the semis. That game, of course, there was a Bozeman. Yes, a different this yeah, time. Big difference here. Get the Jackrabbit home crowd involved. Seven plays, 68 yards, and a touchdown by Mark Grunowski, and it was a beautiful run to the outside. It really was. You had the whole defense fooled, getting Mason McCormick pulling to the outside, and just nobody out there, no edge to the defense. And again, that's something I imagine Zach Lujan saw. Said, hey, man, let's just have that car quarterback keep that thing. And it worked out. Grunowski, a passing touchdown today. That rushing touchdown. He has been solid. And now what can Matthew Sluka do with two timeouts and not a lot of time to work with? Sluka hit, and was he down? He got rid of it. And I think he was sacked by Caleb Sanders. There's also a penalty flag on the field. Holding for 60. Offense, 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay first down. Clay, I mentioned earlier, Caleb Sanders bull rush. I mean, he, he just moved the center McCauley right back in the lap of the quarterback. I, I mean, he's a little bit shorter, so he just gets his pads underneath. He looked just walking him right back over top of him and then into the lap of the quarterback. Just an excellent physical play by Sanders. Just the second penalty against Holy Cross, a long field now. Incomplete. Intended for shorter, underthrown, and so now third down and a ton. Pardon me, second down after the penalty. That's right. And Sluka, he, he's been magical today, making things happen, especially with his legs. He's going to have to make something happen here. And there's Chris Smith. I think he's called a great game here. This is what Holy Cross has been able to avoid most of the day, being behind the chains. Second down and 20. Sluka dancing to the outside, gets it off for Gilliam. Spencer Gilliam makes the catch, gets to the sideline. Third down. And, and Sluka, he's looking for Jalen Coker, right? He's the speed, probably the best wide receiver they have down the bottom of the screen. He's looking for him, but he's well covered on the outside by Deshaun Gales from South Dakota State. Now they'll put Coker in the slot, second from the bottom. Five catches today, 63 yards for Coker. Sluka directing traffic, points downfield, looking for Coker, and they can't connect. Well, he wanted number 80, who was inside the 25-yard line, but bracketed by Gales and Herter. It, and it was the pressure. I think he had, he had a little bit more time early in that route. Coker had a step on the DB, but the pressure forced the throw to be held, had to step up. It gave enough time for the defensive back to recover and force the incompletion. Well, this could be it for Holy Cross. Fourth down and nine. They are two for two today on fourth down. They need the 35-yard line to keep the drive alive. Pressure off the backside. Sluka hit. Ball comes out. Somehow it's caught by Grady Smith, one of the offensive linemen, but that's going to be a turnover on downs. And, and, the, and the pressure right there that Jimmy Rogers, the defensive coordinator, brings was the difference. 
Illegal touching for 77 of the offense. That penalty is declined. The first down and 10 of South Dakota State. And now South Dakota State can run out the clock. Yeah, great play call. Got Jason Freeman, the linebacker, coming. Quentin Hicks gets the pressure. It also brought to Sean Gale. It's just a, some pressure off that left side. You know, Sluga did everything he could. He knows he's got to keep that play alive, but it was to no avail. So many playmakers for the South Dakota State defense. And, and what it is, Clay, we talked about earlier, is, is, is the depth they have. You know, that, that's the difference. Now, there's a lot of teams that have good players offensively and defensively, but South Dakota State, they're, it's like Georgia and Alabama, right? They just, they just rotate in top-notch players, and they stay fresh, and they just, there, there's, I mean, it, it, it just keeps coming. The attack just keeps coming at you. Little pop pass here for Landon Wolf. And we're going to get a quick timeout called here by Holy Cross. They'll have one remaining. Don't forget, tonight is the big night in New York, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. The 88th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony presented by Nissan. Four finalists, all quarterbacks, Georgia's Stetson Bennett, TCU's Max Duggan, Ohio State's C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams from USC. And Michael Penix Jr. handed Hooker. There were a couple of guys yeah. earlier in the season, you know, looking pretty good for them to get an invite to New York, and they missed the cut. Yeah, and look, we, we saw Michael Penix a couple weeks ago when we called the Apple Cup. I mean, he's phenomenal. I mean, I mean, they, they're a four-win team last year. He comes on, has them winning double-digit games, leading the nation in pass yards. And he thought he should have been a part of the conversation. Johnson. It's going to be dragged down, and Holy Cross will use its final timeout. What a year it's been for Holy Cross. 12 wins. You could argue it's the best season in program history, even if this is a loss today. We talked about the Hail Mary win at Buffalo, the shootout win over Fordham in Patriot League play in overtime to help secure the conference for the fourth straight year. They got a First round playoff by they beat New Hampshire last week. Just the second playoff victory in program history. 18 all conference players. Coach of the year, Bob Chesney. It's been a masterful year for the Crusaders. It is. And, and Bob Chesney has just continued to build this program. And, and you just like the direction they're going. I, I think they'll build off of what happened this year. We'll get Sluka back. And he'll be even better than he was this year. And I really give a lot of credit to Bob Chesney for what he's done. And you got to think, that's going to be a hot name uh, in coaching circles yes. this year and in years to come. He has the whole deal, right? He has the looks. He has the, you know, the history of turning programs around. Yeah, I think Johnson stayed in bounds. There you look at Sluka. What a day. A lot of great numbers. 25 carries, 197 yards, a career high, and a touchdown on the ground. And then 122 passing. Did have that interception at the end of the first half, Rocky, that kind of changed the feel of this game. It, it really did, because even if they don't get points there, they go into halftime with a score tied. They get the ball coming out of halftime, but, you know, things just change real quickly. And, and with getting the, the defensive score, the momentum really seemed to go to South Dakota State there. And now John Stigelmeyer is going to call a timeout with 45 seconds left. So the Jackrabbits will have a chance for payback against Montana State next weekend. Isaiah Davis, you talked about him at the top of the broadcast, Rocky. He was going to be instrumental in the backfield today for the Jacks. He, he was, and they just stayed with him. And behind that offensive line, those tight ends just kept at him. Kept wearing him down there for a two-point conversion. Tough run here. Late, making guys miss. Always gaining positive yards. He just never, ever seemed to go backwards at all today. And this is his best run of the day with the stiff arm. <laughs> Tossing Man. defenders to the sideline. We got to get that on Sports Center now, fellas. Let's, let's go. 
The number one seed for the second time in three seasons, but the first time in the traditional 24-team playoff format. They have never been to Frisco in the fall. They want a trip <laughs> down to Texas. I'll tell you what, they looked real good today. I mean, this Holy Cross team came out. They pulled out all the stops, and the Jackrabbits were able to weather the storm and come out victorious. Can they get a first down here? Yes, they can, and they're going to have a touchdown. Jaden Yonke. How about that? Jaden Yonke. The other Yonke twin getting in the end zone for a little icing on the cake. <laughs> They're just trying to pick it up and said it goes into the end zone here. You can see the whole box is stacked there, so a little inside route. No one in the middle of the field and goes for six. And now John Stiglmeyer breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> a rare he says, smile. <laughs> he says he doesn't like it until the gun goes bang. What a day for South Dakota State, especially here in the second half. They really imposed their will. They did, and, and, and you mentioned earlier, Clay, that's what they've done all year. Right? You know you're going to get every team's best shot, and they just kind of hang around. They don't beat themselves, and they just wait for that offensive line and defensive line to overtake you. That's exactly what happened today late in this football game, and they're going to come out on top. Montana State, last year's national runners-up, coming off that 55-7 blowout over William & Mary last night. Isaiah Infonse, their running back, outstanding, the all-time leading rusher in Bobcats history. He'll be a force to be reckoned with for that Jackrabbits defense next week. Brent Vegan's team has one loss this year, just like South Dakota State. It's to an FBS team. They lost to Oregon, Oregon State, State early in the year. South Dakota State lost to Iowa week one. But that's it for those two teams. It's going to be a great game next week. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, can't wait for that one. And, and again, you know, we talked about South Dakota State, how well they stop the run. Not as much today with the way Sluka did, <laughs> skirting around and picking up a bunch of yards, and they got to shut down that Montana State run game that's powerful as well. Football keeps tipping off the tee. And so Dallas Beanham is going to come over and hold it here for Dustman. College basketball coming up. And a doubleheader for you as soon as we're done here in Brookings. And Holy Cross will have it around the 45-yard line. About a half minute to go. And any talk about the semifinals next week has to deeply include the North Dakota State Bison, of course, the defending national champions. Yeah, they've, they've won, won nine of the last 11. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, nine of the last 11. You, you can never count them out because, I mean, look, it's just a, a team that's been there. They're, they're used to winning. They're used to winning in these playoffs. So... I mean, they were really slow to start in that game last night. They've won over Samford, but turned it on. Cam Miller had an efficient night, 15 of 18 for a 194. So they know how to get it done in December. Frisco, Texas is kind of Fargo South this time of year. They're so used to going down there. Big, deep throw to the end zone. That's Coker. We had that Hail Mary catch early in the year. Can't make that catch. Remember back in October, this is a, a picture from the Dakota marker game. The win for South Dakota State at the Fargo Dome, and it changed the feel of the season for South Dakota State and really the feel of the FCS season. Yeah, it, it did because, I mean, look, North Dakota State and their history, they're the kings of the mountain. When you can go into their house, come back from being down 14, come out of there with a win, that that turned a lot of attention around the nation said hey look this jackrabbit team's for real there's oliver still bruising his way into the secondary he's going to fight till the end as yeah, holy cross wants to get another play or two off yeah matt ensign north dakota state have another great team 
Bison will be a tough out again this year. Sluka has a first down and more. He's crunched at the 20-yard line by Caden Johnson, who caught him from behind. But Sluka adding to his stat line here today. And that's going to do it. South Dakota State wins it here in Brookings today. The number one seed advancing to the national semifinals for the fifth time in the last six years. And I think they showed why they're the number one team in the nation. They came out, Holy Cross pulled out all the stops early, were aggressive. They took a Crusaders best punch, but they hung in there and behind that offensive and defensive line. And look, this is just a team that knows how to stay in there. They don't panic and close out a football game.